There's these other vehicles that want to make an approach, and since we've spent a sizable period of time with them, it's time for us to let others have a chance. Let me just... I'll make your approach. Okay, just telling Aubrey that he can come and join us. And I know the Texan is not far behind him. And what we will do is as soon as Tex is close, we will pull out and let him enjoy the sighting. Now for new viewers, the reason that we can shine the light on the lines, and this is also to answer Molly's question, um, the reason why we can shine the lights on the lions without them being bothered is because as nocturnal animals the light doesn't in any way hamper their ability to see in the dark. They have a very very reflective membrane at the back of their retina called the tapidum lucidum which bounces back the light and basically is capable of dealing with light in all kinds of conditions. That's why we shine on nocturnal animals like lions and leopards, but we won't shine spotlights on diurnal animals like, for example, buffalo. There's the lioness. She is. There's no... I don't think there's any way you'll be able to see her, but I think that this spotlight, the guys have found her at the back. She's behind the squarry bush, <laughs> which is unfortunately the thickest tree that we have. So Molly, that's why the lions aren't bothered by the light. They've also, throughout their lives, got used to safari vehicles shining lights on them. That being said, it's very important to spotlight ethically. First of all, you don't need to shine it right in the animal's face. Next to them is just fine. You can sort of bounce back the light. And you also need to be very, very careful when they are hunting. So you can imagine if you are a nocturnal animal, you're trying to creep up on a diurnal animal like an impala or a buffalo and all of a sudden there's this incredibly bright light illuminating you. You can imagine how that will negatively affect their hunting. Here the other vehicles on their way to finding the other lioness. Nearly there, nearly there. Oh, nearly there. <laughs> So she's decided to take a little bit of a break at the back behind. <laughs> I think that hapless hyena in the wind could smell that there was a kill somewhere near, but obviously didn't realize just how close he came to having a very, or a brush with death, so to speak. Because the lioness, if she had, if she had been bothered, if she hadn't been so pregnant, if she'd been a bit faster, a bit more agile, she probably could well have killed that hyena. Most of the time, however, the conflicts between our big predators, our top five predators, actually end with the parties going off in opposite directions and sometimes even watching each other from a comfortable distance. Nothing out here wants to risk injury because it means the difference between life and death. Unfortunately, I don't think I can re reposition in any way to get us a better view. I'm just going to find out where Tax is. I'm sure he's not coming up behind us. He did say he was coming from Impala Plains. I'm sure it's fine. I'll hear him when he comes through. What an extraordinary Saturday this has been. Lions and leopards all over the show. You really are quite thoroughly spoiled. Oh, let's get some nice. It's a pity she has hidden the carcass behind the guari bush now. I was about to say let's get some side lighting, but um, maybe not. Perhaps not. We've got a, a view here of sorts. Well, hopefully these females manage to defend the carcass throughout the evening from other hyena. And they will be here with us tomorrow morning on the Sunrise Safari. There's plenty of meat left. And they should still be around. It just depends on whether or not they manage to defend it. 
we might even find on our return, upon our return tomorrow morning, that they have been joined by some of the missing number of their pride.